Hey everybody, welcome back to American History with Mr. Fenn. Today we are continuing the, uh, the, the events of the American Civil War. We know that the South had split from the North and decided to leave the Union. Remember, the Union was the North and the Confederacy was the South um, upon the election of Abraham Lincoln. And so, the struggle begins, everyone thinks it's going to be a few weeks, as we said. We had the Battle of Manassas that we looked at uh, in the last time we were talking about um, the American Civil War, and it didn't really go well. Picnickers were getting run over and trampled. Um, it was very bloody. We're using old tactics, but we have new technology, these weapons that are just you know, so much more advanced that it gets really ugly uh, really quick in this war. Uh, but today, uh, we have a couple things that we're going to do. So the first is, let's take a look at this. I'm going to give you a couple terms. The Anaconda Plan uh, is the idea that, let me give this to you, uh, that the North should uh, basically strangle, like an like a anaconda sn uh, snake, strangle the south. Now what does that mean? That means with ships and on land. And so really what the Anaconda plan is, is that it's this idea that listen, if the north has all everything, all the supplies, <laughs> all right? I, I, we talked a little bit about this, but the north has, you know, nine of the ten largest cities. It has all the factories. Industrialization is taking off. They have mass production. All the immigrants came to the north, so their population is higher. Uh, they really have all of these uh, advantages on paper. The south have kind of like two advantages. One's a really big one. One is that they have the better generals, and that's really important in war because those are the people who are directing troops and planning out how you're going to attack and do those things. Uh, and the other thing is they're fighting a defensive war. They don't have to go to the north and take it over. The north has to come and get them to give up. Those are two pretty big advantages that the south has. But that being said, the north has everything else. They have literally everything else. So um, the Anaconda plan was this idea that Listen, we're the North. We have everything. Let's just line the shores with ships. Uh, we'll blockade them. We'll block them in. We'll bring troops down. Uh, just surround the South. And we'll just wait. <laughs> we'll strangle the life out of them. They won't have any, any uh, supplies coming in. They'll run out of food. They don't have, you know, they need the, the men to fight in the army. Who's going to grow their crops? They're importing things from other countries. Now they won't be able to. Let's just strangle them. <laughs> and wait it out. Uh, but people did not want this. And the reason why the Anaconda Plan does not work, uh, well, is not popular, let's put it that way, is because everyone still wanted a fast war. Everyone still thought, hey, let's just get this done on both sides. Uh, so the idea of just like waiting and not doing anything, people did not like the idea of that. Um, next person, McClellan is going to be the general in the north. Uh, Northern general. And why I bring him up is because he is going to be, um, you know, a good example of, you know, something that Abraham Lincoln struggles with. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln is the commander in chief. He is in charge of the military. However, he's the president. He's not like at the battle. He has generals. He names generals to lead his Union army. McClellan, who's a northern general, uh, essentially or basically does <laughs> nothing. He's just hanging out. Abraham Lincoln's like, dude, go do something. Go fight. Go, you know, attack the South. Let's get this thing going. And McClellan's like, oh, we're training. We're good. You know, send more supplies. We need more food. And so his troops love him. However, Abraham Lincoln's like, <laughs> you guys are just hanging out. You guys are just hanging out, eating food, not doing anything. Do it does nothing, McClellan. Um, and this is going to be a problem. He, he, Lincoln struggles to find a general who will just go and fight. Um, and eventually he's going to find one, but it takes general after general after general. 
uh, which actually brings me to the next term of gunboat, because in the south, on the Mississippi River, we're seeing a new technology thing called a gunboat. A gunboat is a, or an in this case, an iron. It's an iron ship, but it's kind of like, kind of, half and half, a, a submarine. If you know what a submarine is, a submarine is uh, a uh, iron steel ship that goes underwater. That's why it's sub underwater. A gunboat's like half and half. Like half of it is on top. Let me draw a picture of quick of what a gunboat looks like. Uh, it would look like kind of like this on the water, and it would have these flaps on the side of it that would open, and cannons would come out and they would shoot out of here. But the point is it's not wooden, it's iron, and so anything that hits it, it's not gonna damage it. Um, but again, the reason why I bring up a gunboat, one is new technology, that's, that's important, and it's making these old forts that were built out of wood kind of you know, obsolete or outdated that don't work as well with these gunboats on the uh, water. And two, someone who is um, big on using gunboats, um, and I'm just gonna just say this for now. Grant loves, um, you know, let's just say the fight. All right, Ulysses S. Grant. Let's put a U here for Ulysses. Uh, we're gonna see less Ulysses S. Grant later on. This is just a little bit of you know prior knowledge, um, but. Ulysses S. Grant is down in the south on the Mississippi using these gunboats and fighting these forts, and he is, you know, he's about the fight. Um, whereas during these early times of the war, Abraham Lincoln's dealing with generals who are like, eh, we're good, you know, Anaconda Plan, we'll just sit back, relax. Um, and so that's where we are. We are seen in the south um, on the Mississippi River. Some people are starting to, you know, go after these old forts uh, that were in the south. In the north, we're dealing with McClellan and Abraham Lincoln saying, like, come on, let's get to it. Uh, and it's taking some time to get rolling. After that first battle, it was like, you know, let's chill out for a second. McClellan's like, hey, we have to train better. You see the first battle? How'd that go? We need to train. Uh, meanwhile, Lincoln is like, let's go. Let's get this thing going. Uh, today's assignment. Well, one, turn these in just so I can make sure you're still on track. And you're taking the notes and you have them. And we have our quizzes coming up here next week um, but today uh, we are taking a look at uh, the struggle struggles we are existing in a world here where we're not in person you are not here I'm not in front of you uh, I'm teaching you through the computer uh, there are other struggles with this pandemic and um, you know, how people are dealing with certain things. Uh, we talked about it in one of my classes where, you know, you know, how are you keeping up with, you know, your friends and people who you used to see all the time? You know, what are you doing? Um, people deal with a lot of different struggles. People are saying, you know, hey, I have to do this now, or I miss my friends at school. I wish I could do this. I can't go here anymore, or now I have to do this, or whatever the case may be. There's a lot of people struggling right now with this new world that we're living in. Uh, with this pandemic. So what I'm looking for today is a reflection piece on your struggles or if you are feeling as if you don't have any, uh, you know, who has had them? Who, have, who has had them that you know? I'm sure you know someone who is struggling through this or they're you know, something is going on in their life and, um, it, you know, COVID and the pandemic is causing, you know, hardships of some kind. Um, and so a half page on these struggles and reflection on these struggles and, you know, how are you dealing with it? You know, what have you done? So if you're saying, hey, I've missed my friends, I like to be around them. You know, what have you done? How are you dealing with that? Are you, uh, you know, using FaceTime? Are you using, um, are you texting? Are you calling? Like what, you know, what are you doing? How are you dealing with 
uh, these struggles that you are facing, or if you know someone who has struggled, what, what are they doing? Find, you know, what are the solutions that people are having for um, the struggles, these new things? I mean, like everyone has them. <laughs> you know, everybody has struggles when you have a major shakeup and a major change like this. So uh, it's important to understand that everyone, you know, has struggles, some greater than others, but you know, it's not just you, and it's not just, you know, I have my own struggles, you have your struggles. It's not, we're not alone in this thing. So the point is, how are you dealing with it? What have you noticed? What's, what's good? What have you, how, you, know, you know, how are you dealing with these struggles? Uh, half page, that is what the notes and this is what I would like you to turn in for participation and attendance purposes. And moving on from here, we'll get back into this war and see after things start to uh, move forward. But today we'll take this little break from that as far as an assignment goes uh, but I do want that half page on you know what you've noticed so I will see you next class